So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Honor X7A, a new budget phone from Honor sporting a large display, quad camera systems and a really large battery. But priced at 140 quid, there is competition. So is the Honor X7A worth buying? Let's find out. So if we start with the display on the Honor X7A, it's a large 6.7 inch 90 hertz display with a 720p resolution. And overall, I found the display to be quite nice, actually, and it's pretty much the same sort of story that I found on the regular Honor X7, a review that I did about six months ago. 720p on a 6.7 inch canvas, I did think was gonna be a bit of an issue, but surprisingly, it's actually quite a nice display. Unless you're pixel peeping, you're not really gonna be able to tell that easily that it's a 720p display. The only time that I think you're gonna notice is when you're watching videos and playing high definition games and all that sort of stuff. Of course, you're not gonna get that resolution. But overall, the colors are pretty good on the Honor X7A, but it's the same sort of story as what I found on a lot of the other Honor phones that I've used. The colors don't seem to be as saturated on the display of this phone as what they've been on the other Honor phones as well, and as what you'd find on Motorola's and Samsung's as well. But overall, the display, like I said, is pretty good. You've got some pretty slim bezels around the outside of the phone. You've just got a teardrop notch in the top, relatively slim bezels around the sides of the phone, and then a bit of a chin on the bottom, which isn't too big, actually. There are other phones that I've found that have got bigger chins on the bottom, so Honor have done a pretty good job with the chin on the Honor X7A. The selfie camera on the Honor X7A in this little dewdrop notch is an eight megapixel f2.0 lens, which can shoot 1080p video at 30 FPS. We'll get a little bit more onto the quality of the camera in a bit. So overall, the design on the front of the Honor X7A is pretty modern by today's standards. And then flipping the phone around to the back, you just get your bog standard plastic design and the camera housing in the top left-hand corner, which is very, very similar to the regular X7, although a little bit smaller circles on the back. It is, of course, made of plastic and the sides are made of plastic as well. You get a fingerprint reader built into the power button on the right of the phone and the volume buttons above that. You get a SIM card tray in the top, which you can also use a micro SD card to expand the storage. And then on the left of the phone is completely clean. And then on the bottom, you've just got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a microphone, USB-C charging port, which can support 22 and a half watt fast charging and a speaker grill. And as for the colors on the Honor X7A, you get a choice of midnight black, ocean blue, or this titanium silver, which the photos don't really do it justice. I think the phone actually looks a lot nicer in person. It's got a bit of a very mild sparkly sort of look to it. And it's a pretty nice matte finish and it does a great job at hiding fingerprints. So it is a phone that you can use without a case without getting it all dirty and grubby and horrible. And in terms of the software on the Honor X7A, you get Magic UI version 6.1 on top of the old Android 12. So unfortunately there's no Android 13, at least at the moment on the Honor X7A, whether that's something that's gonna be coming down the line, quite possibly, and that would be nice to see if it does get an update. But overall, Magic UI, like I've said in previous videos, is actually one of my favorite skins to use, as well as One UI and of course, stock Android. There's not a huge amount of bloatware on the phone. There's a couple of preloaded games, which of course you can just remove. And Booking.com, I think, is another app that's on there. But you can definitely just get rid of them and then you've got a pretty clean version of Magic UI. And you've got plenty of customization options with Honor's theme, so you can just really customize the look of the screen to your tastes. Of course, you can just do the usual switching, the icon sizes, text size, your wallpaper, your home screen, all that sort of stuff. But if you really wanted to customize it a little bit more, you can download some of Honor's free themes to really transform the look of your phone. And of course, there are some paid ones as well if you really wanna go that little bit further. So overall, the use of the Honor X7A in terms of software is really good. I haven't had any issues with any stutters or anything like that in terms of the software, but that now leads me on to the performance of the Honor X7A. Now, this is an area where I think Honor had taken a bit of a step backwards from the regular Honor X7. The regular Honor X7 sported the Snapdragon 680 processor, whereas the X7A is using the MediaTek Helio G37. Now, for those of you that may or may not have watched my Motorola G22 review video, link down in the description if you haven't. The performance on the Honor X7A is what I found to be on the Motorola G22. I found the overall experience to be pretty slow, despite the phone having a 90 hertz refresh rate. It didn't really feel like it had a 90 hertz display. Switching it back to 60 hertz, a lot of the time it actually felt a lot smoother than what it was with the high refresh rate display switched on. 
and just general usability of the phone isn't what I found to be as good as the regular X7 with that Snapdragon 680. Apps taken a second or two to open in some situations and there is a noticeable delay when you tap in the app to then when it begins to open, which you don't always find on budget phones. So that is something to bear in mind. If you're looking at the Honor X7a, you're not gonna get the best performance. This is basically a pretty budget offering in terms of performance, but you do get four or six gigabytes of RAM backed up with 128 gigabytes of storage, which of course, like I said before, is expandable. So that's something that's pretty good. You get a nice decent amount of storage that you can expand if you want to. So yeah, like I said, the performance on the Honor X7a isn't to my liking. Don't get me wrong, if you're not someone that does any gaming or any heavy use of the camera or multitask or anything like that, the X7a will do the job absolutely fine. It's just if you're someone that's coming from a phone that may be a little bit quicker, of course you're gonna know the difference. If you came from an Honor X7 to an Honor X7a, not that I'm suggesting you would, with just the small incremental changes, you are gonna notice that the Honor X7a is a slower phone. So something to bear in mind if you're considering the Honor X7a, but considering the phone's price of 140 quid and everything else you get with the phone, I don't think you can complain too much. But one area that you certainly can't complain when it comes to the Honor X7a is the battery life. Now, market dependent, you either get a massive 6,000 milliamp hour battery or a 5,330 milliamp hours. Now, the phone that I've got here is the latter with the 5,330 milliamp hours, which is still considerably larger than the majority of budget phones out today. And this phone, God, it lasts and lasts. You can easily get two full days of moderate use from this phone. Of course, with that lower resolution display, that low power draw from that MediaTek G37, and of course, the capacity of the battery, you get some fantastic battery life. Now, of course, the 22 and a half watt fast charging isn't the fastest on the market, but it is fast enough to get the phone charged in a pretty decent amount of time. But of course, like I say in most videos, I think most people charge overnight. So that's not really something to worry about too much. And of course, given the price, I don't think that's much of an issue either. So if you want a phone that will last you easily a full day and in certain circumstances, easily two days, the Honor X7a is a great option. And lastly, if I just move on to the cameras of the Honor X7a, you get the same quad camera system that you find on the Honor X7, but this time it's using a 50 megapixel main camera instead of the 48 on the Honor X7. The other three lenses are the same, a five megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, and then two two megapixel macro and depth cameras. Now photo quality from the main 50 megapixel sensor is very similar to what I found on the Honor X7 and a lot of the other Honor phones that I've used. Detail is pretty good. Colors don't seem to be quite as vibrant as what you'd find on Motorola's and Samsung's. You do find a bit of a loss in finer areas like grass and leaves and stuff like that. So photos coming from the Honor X7a are about what you'd expect from a budget Honor phone. And then of course, switching to the ultra wide, of course, naturally being a lower resolution, five megapixels, you're not gonna get a huge amount of detail in the shots. And that narrow f2.2 aperture does hinder the detail capture as well, especially as the lighting drops in lower light situations. And unfortunately, there's no night mode supported on the Honor X7a. So that is something, again, to bear in mind if you're looking at taking photos in lower light situations. Aside from using the flash, there is no night mode to capture more detail in those sorts of situations. And then of course, video tops out at 1080p at 30 FPS. And again, like I said in my Honor X7 video, this is just budget quality video. It's not anything special. Perfect for taking videos of your kids at home or your pets or something like that. But of course, if you're a budding videographer, this isn't gonna be the phone for you, nor is any other budget Honor device. Here's a quick 1080p at 30 FPS video sample coming from the eight megapixel selfie camera on the Honor X7a. As like I said, when it comes to the video of the main camera, this is just budget quality video about what you'd expect from a budget phone. And then when it comes to photos from the Honor X7a, this is very similar to what I found with the regular Honor X7, not the best quality photos. The X8 and the X8a did definitely provide better photo quality than what these two phones have produced. But let me know down in the comments what you think of this quality. So overall, I think the Honor X7a does have a place for certain people. If you're someone that just wants a basic phone with a pretty nice display, really great battery life and a camera that will take some pretty decent snaps using the main camera, then the Honor X7a is gonna be a pretty good choice. 
Personally, I would either go for the Honor X7, X8 or X8A, mainly because you get better performance across the board in all of those phones. Camera experience is gonna be a little bit similar, although I did find the Honor X8A main camera did perform better than the other two. I'll drop a link in the description if you wanna check out my review on that phone as well. But yeah, overall, the Honor X7A is a pretty decent phone, but like I said, personally, I'd probably go for one of those other phones. But there are, of course, other phones on the market from other brands like Samsung. You've got the new Galaxy A14 that's just come out. I will be doing a video on that as well. And then, of course, you've got other phones from Realme and Oppo and Xiaomi that you might want to consider if you're looking at a budget phone. But let me know down in the comments what you think of the Honor X7A. Is it a phone that you would consider buying or do you have one already? Ready, or maybe you're looking at one of the other Honor phones as well. Let me know down in the comments and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed it and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.